Good evening, everyone, and welcome to UCLA. We're here to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies. And of course, we're here to honor the vision and legacy of the late Dr. Paul Terasaki, for whom this center is named. Uh, my name's Fred Katayama. I'm a business news anchor at Reuters Television and Video in New York and a mem board member of Japan Society there. And as a journalist, I always have to have full disclosure, so I'm a nephew of Dr. Terasaki. And I'm honored to uh, serve as your master of ceremonies tonight. Thank you. Honjitsu shikai shinkou yaku o tsutome sasete itadakimasu. Thomson Reuters no Fred Katayama to moushimasu. Domo yoroshiku onegai itashimasu. Now, although I didn't, I didn't study here in Westwood, I am acquainted with the center because about more than uh, 10 years ago, I happened to be here in Los Angeles working out of the CNN Bureau on vacation relief. And Uncle Paul called me and said, hey, do you think you can come to UCLA? We're doing this special presentation at the center. Several prospective professors are giving their presentations and I just gave this big donation. So they asked me to sit in. And he lamented the fact that he said, as I, 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 I was a donor, but I'm not allowed to vote or have a say in who gets selected but I am invited and why don't you come along? And I told him, no, I, I can't make it because of the story that I'm working on. But I recall that he said that one of the professors was an expert in Japanese movies. And it wasn't just Japanese movies, but it was some arcane aspect pertaining to the impact of subtitling on Japanese movies. And those of you who know, know Paul, he always thought big and he always looked at the big picture and he was always concerned with the impact that his contributions would make. And so I recall this conversation, he said, you know, um, I, I know you can't be there, but what do you think? And he said in his feeble voice, uh, interspersed that characteristic chuckle of his, do you think subtitling will really contribute to US-Japan relations? Which of course is the mission of the Terasaki Center and make a difference. And uh, not having heard the presentation, I really couldn't answer that question. But it, it just dawned upon me, is anyone here sitting here tonight an expert on Japanese subtitling here at the center? Oh, I guess that person didn't get the job done. All right. <laughs> well, Paul didn't have a vote anyway, so. Uh, but anyway, let's get the evening started. Uh, allow me to acknowledge and thank some of the major supporters of tonight's dinner. They include the Terasaki Family Foundation, the Moore Shapiro families, Tetsu and Kathleen Tanimoto, uh, Kapo Klinger and Elbaz, Irene Hirano Inoue, and Musicians Institute. And next I'd like to invite to the stage a longtime friend of the Terasaki family and a big supporter of the Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies, UCLA Chancellor Jean Block. Now, I'm told he's going to Japan soon to celebrate the opening of the UCLA Japan Center, and like Paul, he's a fellow scientist, and he was the one who conferred upon Paul UCLA's highest honor, the UCLA Medal, Chancellor Block. Thank you, Fred, and good evening to everyone, and it's great to be here at our really quite new conference center, which I, when I look out here, it warms my heart, because this is exactly the kind of gathering that this was designed for to bring together people for important, important reasons to celebrate special events, so it's great you're here. So we're celebrating an important milestone on our campus and also playing tribute to one of our most generous donors, the late Dr. Paul Terasaki. We also want to recognize uh, Hisako Terasaki, who I know couldn't join us tonight because I think she's under the weather, but we're, we're thinking about her. Council General uh, uh, Akiro Chiba, who's here, along with Secretary Norman Mineta, and former LA District Attorney uh, Gil Garcetti, who I just saw across the way. We're all honored that you're all here today, so thank you for being here. This is a great source of pride, the Center for UCLA. 25 years, the Terasaki Center for Japanese Study has advanced our understanding of Japan's past, present, and future. It's fostered deeper collaboration between Japanese studies scholars nationally and internationally. It's really been a hub of these activities. And it honors the legacy of Dr. Paul Terasaki, a true visionary of our time. He was, as you all know, a pioneer in transplant medicine, 
also a three-time UCLA graduate, as we say, you know, three-time Bruin, a triple Bruin, professor emeritus of surgery and a passionate philanthropist. And I got to know him well during the time that we were together. And as I was standing outside uh, cooking out at the deck, and I was talking to, to Keith, and it brought back a great memory I had, is that one of the first interactions I had with Paul was he came to my office, and this was about nine years ago, and he proposed that we build this glass dome over Wilson Plaza. So this is the main plaza, one of the main plazas at UCLA. And my mind started racing, because here's an important, an extremely important person to UCLA, but there's no way we could ever get permission to build the dome. And I started thinking, why a dome? It never rains here. Why do we need a, why do we need a dome over, over, our, uh, over this, this yard? And he explained, of course, that it involved there's a lot of heat and uh, it would block UV rays and it would be a much more pleasant uh, environment. Well, needless to say, we didn't get very far with that proposal because it was hard to accomplish that at UCLA. But standing out there today, I realized how smart again. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> Paul, you were right again, you know? <laughs> As he was with so many things, he really had a, it, he had a great idea that perhaps was a little ahead of its time. But really through his generosity and his sako, the, uh, the UCLA has been enriched and certainly Japanese studies has been transformed. So thanks to their endowment, the Terasaki Center has added an endowed faculty chair for the Contemporary Study of Japan, a community outreach program, and a postdoctoral fellowship, all very important. But the Terasaki family has can really continued Paul's tradition of giving and steadfast dedication to UCLA. A most recent gift supports an initiative that's really dear to me, the Chancellor's Centennial Scholars Match. So we were able to match gifts between $75,000 and a million dollars. We match it with 50% of university funds, which we are very fortunate to have because of some intellectual property uh, sales. And that allows us to generate undergraduate scholarships, which are so important for a university that wants to be welcoming to everybody. It's part of our $4.2 billion centennial campaign, which is leading UCLA into its 100th anniversary in 2019. So also, longtime donors Shirley and Ralph Shapiro, who I saw tonight, are here today. They also generously contributed to this fund, the scholarship fund. So thank you to the Shapiros as well. Thank you. So in closing, congratulations to the Terasaki Center's faculty, students, and staff on a quarter century of excellence. So some of our centers are young, some of them are old. This center now reaches middle age and has been spectacular from its formation to its accomplishments to date. So I'm grateful to all of you for continuing Paul Terasaki's vision for a world-class center for Japanese studies. Now please join me in welcoming UCLA's Vice Provost for International Studies and Global Engagement, Dr. Cindy Fan. Thank you. I'm looking for you. <laughs> Thank you, Chancellor. Good evening. My name is Cindy Fan. I'm UCLA's Vice Provost for International Studies and Global Engagement. I'm also a geographer. Um, professor of Geography and Professor of Asian American Studies. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to this celebration, and in particular, I'd like to welcome visitors to this beautiful UCLA campus. Um, if you haven't had a chance to walk around the campus today, I strongly encourage you to do so tomorrow. Um, this is a time of year when the Jack Randall's trees are blooming, when students start to wear tank tops and flip flops, and Actually, on the third floor, I, I wish I was wearing tank tops and flip-flops. And this is also a time of year when the Terasaki Center has its annual event. Um, but this year is different, because this year is the 25th anniversary of this center. Um, the Terasaki Center is one of UCLA's crown jewels. And Professor Hitoshi Abe is not only an internationally renowned architect for buildings, He's also a visionary architect of programs. Um, don't tell anyone, but he's my favorite director. <laughs> and my favorite associate director, Seiji, Professor Seiji Lippitt, has also played a key role in the center's programs to make the center even more transnational and transdisciplinary. So 
programs such as Japan in the World, New Relationship Between Japan and the U.S., Trans-Pacific Workshop are just some examples of this new vision. And I'd like to share with you three additional thoughts. First, um, like Chancellor Block, I'm extremely grateful to the Terasaki family for their vision and support for the center. The center was founded in 1991, and in 2005, it was renamed the Paul I. and Hisako Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies in order to commemorate a major endowment by the foundation. Um, second, the Terasaki Center is one of the 25 research centers and programs in the International Institute. I'd like to acknowledge also the leadership by the director of the International Institute, uh, Professor Chris Erickson, who's also here in the audience. Um, the International Institute is UCLA's bridge to the world. Um, we each year graduate about 500 students and we award over $2 million uh, of scholarships to students. And we manage more than 350 um, international agreements, including agreements with Japanese institutions. And we host 600 international dignitaries and leaders every year, and we also organize more than 500 public events uh, on, on campus, and these events are free. The Terasaki Center's mission is very much aligned with the mission of UCLA and the International Institute. That is, by embracing a global perspective, bridging nations and bridging populations. We would like to foster innovative international education and research and eventually bring uh, more understanding uh, between nations and populations. And finally, the center is vital to UCLA's engagement in Asia and in the world. As a global research university, UCLA is deeply committed to our students, parents, alumni, and partner institutions uh, all around the world. Um, and we have approximately 1,000 alumni who are now residing in Japan. And that is the largest group of international alumni that UCLA has. And every year we have about 300 students from Japan, and we have about 20 institutional partners in Japan. And our alumni in Japan are prominent, creative, and very loyal to UCLA. Let me cite two examples. A couple of years ago when Chancellor Block led a delegation, a UCLA delegation to Japan, we were able to meet with then Ambassador Caroline Kennedy, in part because one of our alumni worked for her. So it's good to know uh, people who are in important positions. But the most vivid testimony of our Japan alumni's commitment and creativity is the recent opening of the UCLA Japan Center. When our alumni Japan learned that UCLA is gonna be celebrating our uh, 100th anniversary in the year 2019, and when they also found out that the state of California has shrunk its budget for its public universities, including UCLA, they came up with a brilliant idea to help us. Spearheaded by our longtime supporter, Murai-san, Kurokawa-san, and um, to Toyoma-san, who is, uh, Toyoma-san is actually the president of the UCLA Japan Alumni Association, and all three of them are here. Um, spearheaded by their efforts, and also the efforts of other key alumni, the UCLA Japan Center, located in Kashiwanoha, was founded in June of 2016. And at the end of June this year, Chancellor Block will go back there to celebrate the first anniversary of this UCLA Japan Center. So I think our alumni, especially uh, alumni who are here, do deserve a big hand to thank for their support. <laughs> so let me close by congratulating um, Professor Hitusha Abe and Sage Lippe again for this anniversary, happy 25th birthday, and let's welcome Professor Hitoshi Abe.
Thank you, Cindy. Wow. So good evening. My name is Hitoshi Abe. I'm a director of Cent Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies. Chancellor Block, Council General Chiba, Secretary Noma Mineta, and honored guests. On behalf of the Board of Advisors, faculty and staff of Paul I and Hisako Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this special event of celebration and tribute. First, again, I'd like to express appreciation to our generous sponsors and to which each of you for your presence in this evening. I would especially like to express our appreciation to Terasaki Centennial Scholars Endowment Sponsors, Terasaki Family Foundation, and the Moore and Shapiro families. And major sponsors, Sakai Aratani, Tetsu Tanimoto, Jeffrey and um, Nami Follick, and couple Linger and Albus, and Irene Hirano Inoue, Hisatake Shibuya, and Musicians Institute. It is unfortunate that the Hisako Terasaki cannot be here today with us um, due to the bad cold, but she really wanted to join us tonight and we wish her a speedy recovery. For the past six years, I've had the privilege to serve as a director of Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies. And tonight, we honor the center's 25th anniversary and visionary leadership of Dr. Paul Terasaki. Established in 1991, the center is comprised of a board of advisors, 15 full-time faculties, and 40 PhD students in Japanese studies throughout various departments and disciplines. The center is committed to uniting scholars, students, and the community in effort to understand Japan in global and historical context. With an endowment of 15 million, the center supports faculty, students, and other specialists in Japanese studies and share its expertise through campus and community programming. Now we are expanding its reach to engage the broader community, including Japanese Americans and partner organizations to improve knowledge and understanding of Japan. Also the newly established UCLA Japan Center in Kashiwanaha, Cindy just mentioned, uh, it was established by UCLA Alumni Association. I think it will help us to strengthen the ties between UCLA and Japan. Anniversary are the moments that both reflect back and envision the future. But it is getting very hard to predict the future as the world has started to be incredibly dynamic, fluid, and unstable in every area. And of course, the field of Japanese study is no exception. In this different era, the only way to address the future is to share the vision with a strong community and build it up together. I believe that everybody here tonight will participate in forming the strong community with Terasaki Center to envision and create the future together. We have produced a video actually highlighting the 25th years of center. I'd like to thank everyone who participated in the film and who has helped the UCLA Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies find its way to this exciting moment. Thank you and please enjoy the video. Great video. Uh, I like the, uh, Professor Abe saying the sky is protecting us, it gives us light. But of course, Dr. Paul Terasaki is worried about the UV light that was also coming through from the skies, which you wouldn't have, I guess, if there were a dome. But Professor Abe, you're an architect, maybe you can design something for the Luskin Center dome. Anyway, um, thank you, Professor Abe, Cindy Fan, and uh, Chancellor Block for your uh, words. At this point, we're going to take a break for dinner and uh, we'll be back with our program in about 45 minutes. So in the meantime, enjoy your meal, enjoy the conversation, make connections, and also enjoy the 
sweet sounds of the shakuhachi, that's the Japanese bamboo flute. Um, later on, we'll be hearing a performance from Shoshi Kanoko Hata. Dozo o shokuji o meshi I hope you're all enjoying uh, tonight's dinner. Uh, I checked in at the Luskin Center. I didn't know that this was just opened uh, a few months ago. But they have this big book, and of course, it's about the proud history of UCLA. I think it was called UCLA, the first century. And of course, what did I do as a journalist? I go down the index and look up Paul Tarasaki and the Tarasaki Life Sciences Center. It's on page 266, by the way. <laughs> and what was in there was uh, Chancellor Block earlier uh, referred to Paul as a triple Bruin. He did, after all, get three degrees here, all three of his degrees here in zoology. And, but he was a really big, proud Bruin. And uh, this story comes to mind, his, uh, this story that his grandson uh, tells, whose name, by the way, is also named Paul. It happens to be sitting at my table. And I'm not going to mention his name Paul anymore because you'll be confused which Paul I'm talking about. But at one of the family gatherings, he went up to Dr. Paul Tarasaki and said, I'm going to be attending USC. Ooh. Yeah, I get to tell this story at UCLA. I love it. Well, Paul Tarasaki was incredulous. As his grandson tells it, he was sitting in the middle, and the other one was sitting at the end of the table. And all of a sudden, after he told his grandfather that story, the grandfather turned the other way and no longer was talking to him for the rest of the night. <laughs> Later that night, Dr. Terasaki calls his eldest son, Keith, and says, Keith, I heard that uh, said he's going to USC. He was joking about that, wasn't he? <laughs> now, you're probably wondering why I'm telling you this story. Well, it's leading up to this, because you see, our next speaker, Irene Hirano Inoue <laughs> has not one but two degrees from, you guessed it, <laughs> Trojan Town, <laughs> USC. But that did not stop Paul Terasaki from asking her to become chair of the UCLA Terasaki Center Board of Advisors because he knows that. He has the utmost respect for her. He knows that she has a strategic vision, that she can get things done. I know because I happen to be part of her team, uh, and Paul was part of it, to establish the U.S.-Japan Council. And I saw firsthand, I witnessed how, how, how highly Paul Terasaki respected not only Irene, but also her late husband, Senator Daniel Inoue. And given, I'm sure, her contributions to this center, she is definitely worthy of a UCLA eight clap. <laughs> Here is Irene Hirano Inoue. Thank you, Fred, <laughs> for that welcome. I wasn't going to say that, but <laughs> I think Paul forgave me that quite a uh, little bit of indiscretion. Let's give Fred a big hand for being a wonderful MC. He flew out from New York late last night. And um, Paul was always very proud of Fred, so I know he would be happy that Fred was our MC this evening. On behalf of the Board of Advisors to the Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies, let me add our thanks to all of you for attending this evening. This evening, we reflect on the Center's 25 years of history and the opportunities that we have for the future. But we also celebrate the legacy of Paul Terasaki, who was a visionary, a pioneer, and a real friend to so many of us in this room. And we thank the Terasaki family, especially, especially his wife, Amisako, for their continued uh, commitment to the center. I know Paul always worried whether his family would continue the things that he believed was so important, and I know that he would be proud to know that they certainly have. 
The Center's Board of Advisors was established five years ago at the time of the 20th anniversary. And I want to just take a moment to introduce you to the members of the board who are here this evening. Please hold your applause, and I'm going to ask them to stand. First, we have four board members who flew in from uh, Japan, Dr. Akiyoshi um, Kurokawa. So please stand, but hold your applause. Um, Masaru Vic um, Marai. Um, Tomo uh, Toyama, who is the president of the UCLA Alumni Association in Japan, as you heard, and both Dr. Kurokawa and Amurai-san also served as alumni presidents, and Ruji Rick Watanabe. Those are our four members who came in, especially for this weekend. Thank you. And our U.S. board members who are here include Judge Carl Moore, Superior Court Judge, Ralph Shapiro, longtime friend of Paul's, who you saw in the video, uh, Keith Terasaki, and uh, our newest board member, Council General um, Akira Achiba. So please give them a big hand. <laughs> and I thank them for their, their service to the board. So one evening, Paul asked me to have sushi with him um, as he wanted to convince uh, Hitoshi Abe to become the director of the center. So as you all know, uh, Hitoshi served as the dean of the School of Architecture at UCLA. But Paul felt that if the center was really going to fulfill its potential, that it needed to have a leader like, um, certainly like um, Hitoshi. So he said, well, so Amitoshi um, could do both jobs. It's okay that he's a dean of a major school, but he needs to be the center's uh, director. So I don't know how many dinners, besides the one that we had, that it took Paul to convince uh, Hitoshi to become the center's director. But I'm really grateful that Paul succeeded, as he always did when he made up his mind, and that we could not have recruited a better uh, director. So please join me in again thanking uh, Hitoshi for the great work that he has done. It's been really a pleasure to work with him, and he has recruited a great staff um, to really help uh, lead the center as it goes forward. As you know, Paul had a strong uh, commitment in his uh, philanthropic giving to three things, certainly a UCLA, to U.S.-Japan relations, and to the Japanese-American uh, community. I was fortunate to spend a considerable time with Paul over the years, really understanding why he believed so deeply in supporting these three areas of his life. Paul was a co-founder, as um, Fred said, uh, and major benefactor to the U.S.-Japan Council, which I have the honor of serving as the president. He and my late husband, Senator Dan um, Inoue, believed that U.S.-Japan relations was the most important bilateral relationship, and they worked hard in their own ways to ensure that we could strengthen the ties between our two countries. You saw in the video that the center was established in 1992, and along with Paul and uh, Hisaki, um, and, and his wife Misako, George and uh, Sakaya Aratani, and Herb and Helen um, Kawahara also created named endowments to support the center. And when Paul made a major endowment gift in 2005, the center was renamed the Paul and Hisako a Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies. But certainly through the center, it embodies the three areas of commitment which Paul focused on, UCLA, U.S.-Japan relations, and the linkage with the Japanese-American community. Paul's belief in the learning and the teaching and research that the center could do was important to him. But he also knew that the center could be a linkage to a community organizations that would ensure that UCLA and Japan had a continued relationship. Over the years, the center has worked towards these goals, and this evening reflects the coming of that vision that Paul had, coming together with so many of you that are in this room. 25 years is a short time in the history of an academic institution. So Chancellor Block, I wouldn't say that's middle age. I think that's kind of young. <laughs> but, but certainly so much has been accomplished in the 25 years of the center. And we hope that all of you will be inspired this evening to continue to support the center in whatever way. And we look forward to many, many more years in which Paul's vision can continue to be realized. 
This evening, we are truly honored to be joined by one of the people that Paul admired greatly, and that is uh, Secretary Norman Aminetta. Norman and his wife, Denny, left Washington at 5.30 a.m. this morning, which means they had to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. But that's really reflective of Norm and Denny's a commitment to a community. And throughout Norm's a career, he has always been there when there has been an important event. As you all know, Norm served our country as mayor of San Jose, um, was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, and the Secretary of Commerce and the Secretary of Transportation. But Norm continues to serve in so many capacities, including currently as the chair of the Japanese American National Museum's Board of Trustees and as vice chair of the U.S.-Japan Council's Board of Counselors. And most importantly, to many of us in this room, Norm is our wonderful friend. So please join me in welcoming the extraordinary Norm Mineta to the stage. Irene, thank you very, very much for your wonderful and generous uh, introduction. Good evening to all of you and to uh, Chancellor Block, to um, Vice Provost Fan, Hitoshi Abe, to Irene Hirano Inoue, uh, Mrs. Hira uh, Isako Terasaki, and I'm sorry that she isn't fe feeling well to be able to be here tonight, and to uh, Dr. Keith Terasaki and the entire Kawasaki or Terasaki family and guests. It is really an honor for Denny and me to have an opportunity to be here at this special evening. It is a privilege to be here to celebrate the 25th anniversary <clears throat> of the UCLA Paul I and Hisako Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies and to honor Dr. Terasaki. As you are so very well aware, Paul was very proud to be an American. He was also proud of his Japanese ancestry. And Paul was a man of great vision, <clears throat> a research and organ transplant pioneer, and a man who believed in the value of strong and sustained relationships throughout his life, in his profession, here at UCLA, in the Japanese American community, and in the promotion of U.S.-Japan relations. Paul enjoyed a long and impressive history and built a legacy that continues today here at UCLA, as we heard from Chancellor Block. Now for me, of course, he was an example of a person who was dedicated to the community and to his profession. Now, Paul spent time at Gila, the internment center during World War II. And I, uh, as a young boy, uh, was in Heart Mountain. And I remember when those signs were going up, those large placards that were being put on the sides of buildings and and on utility poles. And it said, instructions to all those of Japanese ancestry, alien and non-alien. I looked at that sign as a 10-year-old kid and I said, who's a, who's a non-alien? And I asked my brother, who was nine years older than me, who was majoring in pre-med at San Jose State at the, at the time. I said, that's you, citizen. Well, then why don't they call me a citizen instead of calling me a non-alien? And 
ever since that time, I have cherished the word citizen because our own government, my own government, wasn't willing to use citizen to describe us. We were non-aliens. Now, I don't know when the last time any of you stood on a chair and beat your chest and said, I'm a proud non-alien of the United States of America. I don't think you have. And yet, uh, this is, was the subject of something that we all experienced in, uh, in that World War II period. Now, Paul's career started at UCLA here in the late 1960s. And his concentration, his focus, was to make sure that because of his deeply held views about certain things, and one of them is family values. He deeply valued family. He deeply appreciated our culture and family roots. The Japanese American community trying to sustain and strengthen U.S.-Japan relations. So as a result of those interests, Denny and I enjoyed those times when Isako and uh, Paul and, and uh, Denny and I would get together for dinner and share some of these thoughts. Now, as all of you are aware, here in Los Angeles, uh, Dr. Terasaki and his family are deeply rooted in the Japanese American community, where they have many friends in LA's west side and have supported community institutions like the Japanese American Community and uh, Cultural Center, Little Tokyo Service Center, and the Japanese American National Museum, in which I have the privilege of serving as the chair of the Board of Trustees. Now, through Paul's generosity and commitment to education, culture, and supporting the sustainability of the Japanese American community, Dr. Terasaki continues to touch many lives and multiple generations. Paul was committed to deepening and sustaining the relations with Japan and was constantly creating new ways to form partnerships and open hearts and minds through scholarships and fellowships here at UCLA, supporting Nikkei College student delegations to Japan and the Nibei Foundation, which continues today dedicated to building connections between Japan and the Japanese American community. Dr. Terasaki was deeply committed to creating and supporting organizations like the Nibei Foundation, the U.S.-Japan Council, and the UCLA Terasaki Center for Japanese Studies that would have enduring and lasting impacts. And so tonight we continue to thank and honor Dr. Paul Tarasaki for his vision, his friendship, his commitment, and so much more that he has done in our community. So in the absence of Mrs. Tarasaki not being here, I would like to ask uh, their sons, Dr. Uh, Keith Tarasaki, and Yaichi to come forward at this point. So, um, um, Itoshi 
And uh, let's have um, Dr. Keith Terasaki and Yaichi come on up for a presentation. So again, um, Toshi, why don't you come on over on this side? <laughs> so on behalf of um, the UCLA Asian uh, Studies Program and the center, I'd like to present this to you, Keith, to honor again uh, the work of uh, Dr. Paul Terasaki. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all uh, for coming here. I know my father would have been proud to receive uh, this award. He put a lot of thought and effort into the UCLA uh, Japan Center. Um, let me just say, in answer to the many questions about my mother tonight, uh, she, she is doing better. Uh, she caught a bad cold a f few weeks ago and was bed bound for a week but she's been slowly recovering her stamina. Uh, she wishes she could be here, uh, but says hello to everybody. <clears throat> one, of my goal, one of the goals of my father was to work on improving relations between the United States and Japan. He felt that both countries had a lot to learn and a lot to gain by having a good understanding of each other. Importantly, he used to always tell me that the youth are the key. He always wanted there to be college students with good access, with access to good professors in both countries learning about the other country. <clears throat> if we ever win a generation where there was no interest or opportunity to learn about the other country, then the link between the United States and Japan could be diminished forever. This is the real reason why he decided to support the uh, UCLA Center for Japanese Studies. Uh, if you don't know, it's the largest center of its kind in the United States. It offers undergraduate students, graduate students, and postdoctoral students the opportunity to study and become scholars in many aspects of Japanese life, as well as supporting students in Japan to learn about the United States. <laughs> you know, my father, uh, chose to donate to the program at UCLA because uh, UCLA really helped him uh, immediately after World War II. Uh, you know, the Japanese people weren't that popular, you know, in the United States, <clears throat> but UCLA accepted him and treated him fairly, and, you know, he went to school here and uh, eventually got hired here. <clears throat> there are other similar Japan centers at other universities, so you're welcome to support those in addition, uh, they have similar goals, and um, you know they're, they're all for the, a worthy cause. So uh, in conclusion, I, I just want to thank you all for coming tonight and supporting the UCLA Japan Center. Uh, we need to continue doing things like this if we want to keep a strong bond between the United States and Japan. Thank you. <clears throat> I, my mother would actually um, like, you, like to thank all of you for coming tonight. And I actually have her on FaceTime. <laughs> so I'm just thinking maybe you could all wave to her as I scan the phone <laughs> by, by you. Okay, she thanks you really. Thank you. Don't you just love social media? <laughs> and I think this mean moderator was trying to say, cut the phone earlier. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, uh, Keith. Uh, thank you, Norman. Thank you, Irene. You know, as Irene was saying, um, the three pillars that Dr. Paul Tanisaki supported, uh, UCLA, US-Japan relations, and the Japanese Americans, and Norm talked about the Japanese American experience about Paul and himself. and. Uh, Keith talked about Paul's, uh, his father's um, dedication to uh, the community. And it dawned upon me, just this week, their names were, the, Keith and his family were in the local headlines,
because they gave three and a half million dollars to what will now be a building in Little Tokyo called the Terasaki Budokan, a new sports center. <laughs> and of course, here on this UCLA campus, there's the Terasaki Life Sciences Center that was dedicated a few years ago. And I thought about, as Norm was talking about the Japanese American experience, just how far the community has come when you consider that Norm himself has his name up on the airport in San Jose, the Norman Mineta Airport. We've got the Terasaki Life Sciences Building here, not to mention the new Terasaki Budokan that'll be opening up. And Senator Daniel Inoue, humble as he always is, who always shied away from being, having things named after him, posthumously, the airport in Honolulu will be named after him. It's like that old Virginia Slims ad, you come a long way, baby, Japanese Americans. Anyway, time now for a dessert, so we're gonna take a break, and we'll be back in about half an hour. All right, I hope you enjoy your dessert. Now we're gonna have some final words from the Associate Director of the Tarasaki Center. His name is Professor Seiji Lippitt. He's, uh, Dr. Lippitt specializes in modern Japanese uh, uh, literature and film, and it, I just learned we had the same uh, professor uh, that he did his PhD thesis on, Dr. Uh, Donald Keene. Anyway, Dr. Uh, Lippitt will to say a few words, and he represents the faculty of the center. Dr. Lippitt. Good evening. I have the honor of offering a few closing comments uh, tonight. I've been teaching Japanese literature and culture at UCLA for more than 20 years, and I've had the privilege of being associated with the Terasaki Center for that entire time. When I first came to UCLA in 1996, I didn't realize that the center was in fact only five years old. It seemed like it had been around uh, forever. That was a testament to the faculty members and staff who built the center. Uh, now, after 25 years, we may be entering middle age, as Chancellor Block uh, mentioned uh, earlier. But one remarkable fact is that we have had only three directors in our history. They are all here tonight in this room, and I'm very pleased to acknowledge them. Uh, first is Professor Fred uh, Nothofer, the founding director of the Terasaki Center, uh, Fred. Uh, Fred was a longtime uh, history of, uh, professor of Japanese history at uh, UCLA, uh, and uh, he uh, helped to build the, the center. Uh, after uh, Fred retired, Professor Mike Thies took over the directorship. Uh, professor Thies uh, is here. Oh, there he is. Uh, Mike is a specialist in uh, Japanese uh, politics, uh, and uh, he is now heading up the Global Studies uh, program at UCLA. And of course, you all know Professor Hitoshi Abe, uh, who is a professor of architecture and has been the director of the center now for more than six years. It has been my privilege to work with all three of them and to see the center grow stronger year by year. I would like to also acknowledge all of the students and faculty who are here uh, tonight. Uh, this is, uh, you are the reason for uh, all of the work that the Terasaki Center uh, does. Now, uh, we have accomplished quite a lot in 25 years, but there are also many exciting possibilities ahead of us, and I'm excited to see what the future will bring. Over the past few decades, we have relied upon the support of so many people in the community, both locally and around the world, including all of you who are in this room tonight. I hope you will continue to remain connected to us as we build the future of the center, carrying on the legacy of those who came before us. Before we close, I would like to offer my heartfelt thanks to our wonderful staff who have worked day and night to put together this event in those of the past few days. So thank you to Noel Shimizu, Marty McElreath, Morgan Montelius, and Marika Kawano.
I would also like to thank our wonderful student performers who uh, performed during the reception beforehand, including Yukai Daiko, the wonderful Taiko troupe, uh, and also Kirk Kanesaka, uh, who, the kabuki actor. He, in fact, is a, a graduate student here at uh, UCLA in Asian Languages and Cultures, and he is also the only American professional kabuki uh, actor. And finally, I would like to express my appreciation to all of you for being here tonight and helping us uh, so much throughout the years. I look forward to continuing this journey with you all. Thank you again, and have a good evening. Thank you, Seiji. Um, before we close, just uh, two things. Um, as a journalist, I feel I've got to update you on two things. One, um, I, I sort of promised that during dinner you'd be entertained to the sweet sounds of the shakuhachi. It was so silent, you probably never heard it. Um, I didn't either. Uh, it, it turns out uh, the person didn't show up, and we hope uh, he's all right. Um, but that's one, in case you're wondering. And two, there's a centerpiece, floral centerpiece, at each of your tables, and one of you is a welcome to uh, take it home. Hope you don't fight over it. And uh, I said two things, but there's always three. Um, it, uh, I made that comment about uh, uh, the, after Chancellor Block talked about the dome. I said, hey, wouldn't it be great if Professor Abed designed it, given his architectural skills? Well, Professor Abed tells me that actually he did design a dome. <laughs> it turns out right after he moved to UCLA, he was a rookie here, and uh, Paul Terasaki goes up and says, hey, there's this dome. Can he design this dome? So he actually made some blueprints. <laughs> Um, it, which goes back to the story that Irene talked about in getting Professor Abed to be the head of the center. Paul never takes no for an answer. And one of the stories I heard from one of his close co colleagues was that at uh, a One Lambda, the, uh, the company that he operated um, here in Los Angeles, he would go up to an executive and say, hey, what do you think about this idea? And then he'd go, ah, not sure about it. He goes to another office, to another, he said, well, I've got this idea for some, what do you think about this idea? He'll keep hitting someone up until he finally gets that yes for an answer. That's tenacity. Anyway, I just want to thank you on behalf of all the folks who organized this dinner. Thanks for taking time out from your busy schedules to join us on this weekend. And uh, please, uh, drive home safely. Minasama, dozo o kiyotsukete o kaede kudasai.